one that kind of defines a lot of people see the season, this run. What have you said to your guys right after when you're loading up with them? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to simplify stuff. Right? I feel like if we take care of the ball, make our layups, make our free throws, you know, we'll be all right on offense. On defense, we got to be locked in. You know, I think we played hard enough to win these last two games, but we didn't win them. We, you know, our offense hurt us a lot, the turnovers, but you, know, you can play hard and still not be locked in on the defensive end, flying around, making dumb mistakes and fouling still get you a loss. So we've got to play really hard like we did, but we've got to add some layers of some execution on the defensive end, and then we got to guard without fouling. So, you know, kind of three things on both sides of the ball. It's take care of the ball, make our layups, make our free throws. On defense, let's continue the effort. You know, that's a winning effort, but we got to show some IQ, execute our plan, and do it without fouling. You said after the SEC tournament, like, this wasn't locked in, and that's what it takes, as you just mentioned. Have you seen a different mentality this week at practice than maybe before? Yeah, I, I think we, our guys realize, and you try to tell them, you know, we, we knew we had an NCAA tournament bid, so if you lose in the SEC tournament, you still got another game. We, if you lose now, it's done. There's, there's no other game. So if you can't get locked in at this point, like, you, you know, I don't know what it would take to get them locked in, but I do sense a a little bit more sense of urgency in practice than maybe what we've had. Some guys, some guys realize like the end is here if, if we don't clean up some of these little things that we need to clean up. What do you think has kind of led to that downturn in the, the free throw shooting lately? I, mean, I, I think when you're locked in, you're locked in. I think when you're worried about the wrong stuff, you're worried about the wrong stuff and your mind's cluttered. You walk to the free throw line, you're thinking about everything you shouldn't be thinking about. When you're locked into what you have to do to win the game, you're focused on whatever it is. When you're on defense, you focus on defense. When you're on offense, you focus on offense. When you step to the free throw line, you focus on what you need to do to make a free throw. Like, you know, and some of it's, I think, some guys maybe put a little too much pressure on themselves. Like, no, we just need you to make the free throw to help the team win. You don't need to, you know, to focus on what you have to do for yourself. And that backfires as well, too. Are you enjoying the, the kind of fly today? Do you kind of settle and see that game tomorrow? Is that yeah, good? yeah, it's nice. a lot better. You know, we get in there a day, settle down. We got a gym to shoot at tonight, and we'll lock in tomorrow, have a practice, then be able to watch the game, see who we're playing. Already been there for a night, you know, then adjust to the time change a little bit, adjust out there, get settled in, and then figure out who we play. You know, we're trying to prepare for both teams as if they're the only one we're preparing for, but can't completely do that. So once we know who we're playing Wednesday night, for sure we'll go all in on that team. What's the atmosphere in the room when the team watches this game? I mean, are they going to be note taking, or you just want them to have fun and enjoy it? Or to be honest with you, I, like staff will probably watch it together. We may even split up, watch it offensive side, defensive side. The players, most of the time, we just let them watch in their room. We're not trying to make them. We'll, we'll gather them together later that night and review the film on that team. Now we've today we showed Notre Dame film. Yesterday we showed Rutgers film. Both days in practice, we had a segment of Rutgers and a segment of Notre Dame. The staff was ready for both before we practiced on Monday. But, you know, we'll, tomorrow we'll do a little mix of both. Probably some cleanups from our first two days of practice, you know, how we're guarding the stuff. And then, obviously, Wednesday night after the game, we'll meet and have a – we'll have an edit ready together, ready put together already of uh, whichever team it is we're going to end up winning and playing. So we've already given them some video on each team. You have a lot of guys that play. made a big run um, last year. How big is the experience for them to help the younger guys in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think it is big because it's a different deal. I, I, you know, last year was a little different with the bubble. You're not flying to different sites and having a full arena. So it'll even be new for the guys that have experience last year. But to have an experience in a loser go home game like we did, even though it was in the bubble, is still a big deal. You know, Quinterly played really well in March. You know, Shackelford's been in the games. You know, we had three games. We, we had a tough one against Iona. Played really well against Maryland. And then, you know, obviously had the tough loss in overtime against UCLA. But those guys have three NCAA tournament games under their belt. Keon Ellis, Quinterly, Shackelford, Juwan Gary, Darius Miles. You know, we've got a group of guys that's played in big games like that, I think it, I think it'll definitely help in that, in that regard. You mentioned Shaq. Do you think he's a little excited to be going back to California? Yeah, you know what? Probably his uh, his family's out there. He grew up out there. You know, not too far from San Diego. So I'm excited for him. I think he's excited. I think 
be special shooting if we win two games we get to stay out there in California so that'll be fun. Anything else? All right, thanks. Appreciate